Ever since the election, I've been getting a lot of questions about the anti-Trump protest. A lot of people are sending me questions ranging from what do I think of them to they should all be shot. Don't you agree? Well, I want to address that first part. What do I think of the anti-Trump protests? And I want to say I am all for them. I'm all for protesting. I'm all for civil disobedience. I don't see how someone can say I'm a big supporter of the Constitution and not be pro protest, not be in favor of these people being able to take to the street and express their opinions. I think being able to protest against our government, to speak out, to actually make a scene is one of our greatest constitutional protections. And you cannot be a hypocrite and say, I support the Constitution, but I don't support these people. If you do that, like I say, you are a hypocrite and you don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Who does want to be a hypocrite? And I think the right to protest goes up to and includes, in my opinion, Civil disobedience. You have a right to be civilly disobedient as long as you're not hurting people while you're protesting. I think that is something that we should support. I do not mind if I'm personally inconvenienced by a protest, say a road is closed or something like that. Last night, I was coming back from roller skating at Oaks Park. Most of the bridges in downtown Portland were closed because of the protest. I had to do a big zigzag, long way around way to get home. But it didn't bother me because these people were doing something that I think is very important in our society. They were protesting something that they didn't agree with in our government. And the fact that a road was shut down or a bridge was shut down, that does not bother me. In fact, I think it's necessary sometimes. If you don't make a scene, if you don't make a stink and you don't inconvenience some people, you don't get any attention. How many times have we as pro-gun people said, you know, a thousand people gathered to do this today, but the media didn't give it any attention because it didn't cause any problems. Sometimes you have to make a little bit of a wave to get any attention from the media. Now, the fact that I don't mind being inconvenienced and I don't mind them inconveniencing you doesn't mean they have the right to harm anyone, though. That's totally different. You can scream at people. You can block streets, whatever you want to do. I'm OK with that. But as soon as you lay hands on someone, you're in the wrong. You're now a criminal. You're not a protester. You're a criminal. And it doesn't just stop there when you physically abuse someone. If you put your hands on someone else's private property and damage that private property or call someone a loss, then you're also a criminal. You're no longer a protester. You're just a criminal. And why would someone listen to the opinions of a criminal? So in the end, I want the protesters to go out there. I want them to speak their mind. I want them to stand up when they don't agree with something in our government. That doesn't mean they're going to be right every time, but it means I want them to have the right to do it. And I want them to engage in civil disobedience up to the point of causing inconveniences for the public. That's how you get attention for your cause. What I don't want is for them to cross into the level of being criminals. Because when they cross into the level of being criminals, whether I agree with them or not, I don't see how anyone would listen to them. You don't listen to criminals. You listen to protesters. You don't listen to criminals. So if you're out there and you're protesting, keep that in mind. Stay someone that you would want to listen to. Don't become someone that no one wants to listen to at all.